Good evening. <coughs> I'm very tired. But I thank God. Actually, I didn't know I was still going to come to a live video today because I've been making my hair, as you can see. So that's a testimony. Finally, I can make my hair after these days. So I bless God. So when I got to the time, I became very tired and I was like, let me rest more. So I was, while resting, I was thinking, this resting is going to take me a longer time and before I finish my hair and I come back to make this video, it's going to take a lot, a lot of time. But I don't know. I don't know. I think God, God really wants me to be coming online for this video every time and I'm grateful that he's always giving me that grace. It's something I'm most grateful for. So the topic of today, I'm also grateful to God because I was so tired. I didn't even know I would do anything. <clears throat> so I, I wasn't going through any practice or so. But I'm still very, very grateful that I'm here to do this video. The topic is sexual purity. God's plan for a fulfilled life and a peaceful life. That's I'm sorry, I stood out tired. <laughs> so So that's the topic for today. You see? Sex is not a sin. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Engineer. Demitope, thank you so much. I appreciate your comment. So, sex is not a sin. God actually gave us sexual hodges. It is not a sin. You see, as teenagers, you might want to ask this question like, if God doesn't want us to have sex at a tender age, then why did he give us sexual hodge? Why can't you just take it away and when we are ready for marriage, you should give it to us? God, it is not a sin, but he has placed the right plans the right ways of doing it so that we don't get hurt, so that we can have a fulfilled life, we can have a peaceful life. I'm sorry, what you really? <laughs> it is actually the will of God that we should have a, a pure sexual life. God's plan for sex is married people. Two people, man and woman, not woman and woman, no. and not man and man, man and woman, who are doing the will of God by going into marriage that we want to be together. We want to live together. They are put decided before God, before man and woman, before friends, before family members that they want to be together, to build a home together. So everybody knows them now that they are couples and they are living together. So they can both know about each other, secrets, do everything together, express their sexual hurts together. That is when it is God's way. But when you are doing it before you get married, it is not God's way. Even if you both 
agree that you're going to get married to each other. It is not yet right for you to do it. And there's no way you won't incur the wrath of God upon your life. You can't just do without it. He's not man. If God's promises are ye and amen, the same way God's words of judgment, they are true. God is a righteous judge. The way you might think he will punish you, that might not be the way he will punish you. There are a lot of sexually transmitted diseases today. That's some punishment for some people. Sometimes you can get pregnant out of wedlock and the shame, the agony, the pain. Some girls, their life gets truncated. Like, not, not that they are not alive. Some, some people actually died in the process while trying to commit abortion. Abortion is not good because you are killing a child that is coming and having pregnancy, getting pregnant is God's will. Only God can do it. You can force yourself to get married to someone, but you can't force yourself to put pregnancy within you. So if God has given you the grace to be pregnant, it is God's will. It is God that has done it. And if you have to carry your shame, no problem. Carry it and let God, God remove the shame afterwards. It's better than, than killing the child. Everybody has great destiny, has a purpose in life. Yesterday I was talking about you not caring about your kids when you're just going to marriage for wrong reasons. But even if you allow these children to come to the world, they might meet somebody who will train them in the way of the Lord. They might meet someone. They might be an inspiration in some ways, even if the life is rough for them at the beginning. But later on, they can still come across somebody who will train them in the way of God. And they can still have a peaceful life. So don't kill any child. So I'm just trying to talk about some of the dangers in engaging in sexual sin you understand then like i said the, our destiny is attached to it i really don't understand it so much but in my head in my thinking you know i told you i think about things a lot and when people say things i try to reason it Sometimes I get the answer. Sometimes maybe it's just some inspiration from God. I think... Maybe it's in the Bible, I don't know. But let me just quote what I'm thinking in my head. I think... When someone outside of marriage involves in premarital sex. Let me see a young person who is not ready to get married and who is not married yet decide to decide to have sex. I think there are a lot of things that go into it. Firstly, you, like, you feel ashamed of yourself, you, it's just my thinking, I might be right, I don't know, but I, you know, when you see some people, like some videos that you watch and the way some girls behave, like, Nkotong we need to do, like, you kind of lose it. You kind of lose your sense of reasoning. Your sense of... Because sometimes I wonder... I 
I watch some videos on Instagram. You see some girls bringing out their breasts almost out and men touching. And I'll just be like, ah, God, why? Why would a girl feel so comfortable doing this thing? And that's why I'm having this kind of thought. Like, it seems when a girl is no longer... Then I also watch some videos on my friend's phone. <laughs> My friend is not, he's not a born again Christian, so he can watch anything. Like, he wants some videos of some girls on Instagram too. Almost naked. Wearing pants and bra alone. Shaking bum bum, doing all sort of rubbish and... And he'll be showing me, tell me, look at this girl, see big breasts, see big girl. I'll be like... These girls, they're spoiled girls. So don't even get attracted to them. Do you want to go and meet them? Okay, just go and meet them. That's it. <laughs> but what I'm just trying to say is that those are the repercussions of primary success. Sex outside marriage. You lose something called shame. Like you lose something called is it shame I can call it? It's integrity, like you feel like you don't have a life anymore. But it's not true. God can heal the broken hearted. But what I'm just trying to say is that those are the things that go into it. It's just for you not to go into it. Once you go into it, you 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 feel you have that feeling like something has gone out of you, like a virtue, a glory. Something that should be part of you but has left you. Apart from the physical things you see, the physical dangers, I think the more spiritual part is that thing that is leaving you. Because sometimes I wonder why a girl will feel so comfortable, so comfortable to allow the first man will touch you, you don't feel any any restriction, another man, third man, fourth, like, and you're not, you're not feeling reluctant about it. You are feeling proud that you are exposing your body, exposing your private part, and nothing is making you feel worried about it. I don't know if I'm making sense, like, those are the things that leave you. So if you are a young girl, and that's fear of I want to keep myself is still within you I will advise you to just allow it to remain because once you do it you will not have shame again you will not have that thing within you that is keeping you away from it you won't have it again you will not have it anymore you understand So, after saying all that, I, I I think some of the things that also happen to girls and men. Okay, I've listened to people saying it, and I have also thought about it, and I and I feel it is true. I think, and I and I want to believe it is true, is that when a girl has sex outside of marriage. It doesn't make sense to her like it's supposed to make if it had been inside marriage. Because when it is in marriage, it makes you connected to your partner because that is the will of God. It makes you connect to your partner. If you are a young girl and a man is telling you, I want us to be connected, so let's have sex, let me feel you, I want to get close to you. Once you do it with him, you're not going to feel connected. You're going to feel used. You're going to feel attached to him in a way that you're not supposed to be attached to him. He will be treating you wrongly. You can't be hungry with him. Because you didn't do it at the right time. Thank you, engineer. I tell you. Because you're not doing it at the right time. And you're not doing it for the right purpose. So don't allow any man to convince you that 
having sex is going to make you get connected to him outside marriage. It's not going to connect you. There's nothing like that. It's not going to connect you. So about ladies, it doesn't, it doesn't, they don't get that connection. And it always leave a hole within them. I'm talking about girls now. It always leave a hole. Let me just say I'm seeing this thing from how God is bringing it to my head. <laughs> don't, don't, like, don't be confused about what I'm saying. To me, too, I'm, it's not as if I have the experience, but from studying people and thinking and having inspiration about it, like God explaining situations to me, that's where I'm getting all these things from, and listening to people talking to. So, it doesn't make sense to them. That is why you can have a girl, your girlfriend, you do everything for her. You, you, but you guys, you both have sex together. And then you are surprised she still goes to other men outside marriage to have sex with. And you are wondering, what is it I have not done for you? The thing is, the sex has not connected both of you together. And it will not connect you if you are doing it wrongly. God designed sex to connect married couples, not unmarried couples. When you are unmarried and you are doing it, it's not going to connect you to the person you are doing it with. It's going to make you miserable. It's going to cause damage to your life. Now I'm talking about the spiritual part. Psychologically, it's going to break you. It's going to cause you a lot of damage. Then the spiritual aspect too. The girl doesn't feel attached to the man. Like you think he's at, you are attached to him. I mean, like you think she's going to be attached to you. I, I mean, connected to you. There's even between connected and feeling attached. You have heard someone say, when she attached, she me. Like he's just trying to attach himself. Something that is not going to connect. Let, let, let me put an example. This thing, like this thing, I'm trying to attach it to this thing. It's not going to fit in. Because there's no hole, there's no joining, there's no connection trying to join this thing together with it. You understand? My hand, look at, there's no, but when it is marriage, it fits perfectly. Look at this cover and this. It just fits. There's connection. That is what, that is the difference when it is in marriage and when it is outside marriage. You are only attached, you are only feeling attached, you are feeling, I belong to this man. But you, are, you don't belong to him. You are only attached. But when it is in marriage, you are connected perfectly. You stand as one. But when it is outside marriage, that is why you see a lot of girls suffer from a lot of, a lot of emotions, like, Emotional damage, like that, is the reason why most of them go through their husband's phone because they are they, they are not connected to this man. You are not connected. Whereas if you had not had sex outside marriage, you are trying to build a connection. You understand? Until you get married, then you finalize the connection. But during courtship and Friendship stage, you're just trying to build a connection which is going to be finalized inside your marriage with sex. You understand? But when you are outside marriage, you are only attached. You are attached and you can never be fully attached. This you can break any time. Any of them can cut off any fucking time. Oh, sorry for using fucking... <laughs> Any, any, any time. Let me just say any time. I use fucking because like any time it can happen. It doesn't matter. You might feel I, I cook for you. I do this for you. I sleep in your house for money tonight. I stay in your house for one month. I like, that's why I use fucking, you know. I don't mean the, <laughs> the raw fucking like, I'm saying I'm not talking about that. But what I'm trying to say about 
that thing is that any time, any bullshit time, any, it doesn't matter. You understand? You're not connected to this man. Nothing is connecting you. And you, you know one thing about the stages in relationship is that those things you're supposed to learn. Once you, you refuse to learn them, now I'm talking about those who eventually ended up getting married. A lot of people get dis detached at any time. You understand? You get detached at any time. But let's talk about those who eventually got married. That's why that they have been involved in premarital sex. Those things they're supposed to have learned together while in courtship and relationship period. And they didn't learn. They're going to find the missing part in their marriage. You understand? The missing part is going to be there. Because once you, once you, you, okay, let me, let me put these two things together. When you are not having sex during courtship, you are just beside each other. You are just beside each other, showing your emotions afar off. None of you is attached, you are not, not attached to each other, you are not trying to claim I'm attached. But once you feel, once you go into sex, you feel you are attached, you feel you are connected. It's just like these two things, just staying beside each other, nothing is connecting them. But now you feel you are connected, but you are not connected. Oh man, so we can hear you back. He let you have to more every no man go. It's just like now I put something very light to connect this thing. It's not going to connect. It will never connect. And anything can break it at any time. You understand? So that is those are the dangers you put yourself in as a lady. Any man can just flaunt anything around you. And what's the on here? That's why a lot of guys go through a lot of stress trying to convince their girlfriend. To stay with them, not to go after other men. Because the thing you use in enticing her to go to bed with you, another man has it better than you. Are you talking about the size of your genital organ? Somebody else has it better than you. Once someone else is able to convince her, she goes with that person. But when you are in courtship and there's no premarital sex, you are connecting you're trying to bond you are trying to make a connection with each other you understand i i told you about my relationship many times we don't even talk but we are connected one way or the other because we don't have sex we don't go into Things like that. You understand? Once we start doing things like that, I feel like he has taken a part of me. You understand? I feel there's a part of me that is with him that when he doesn't talk to me, I feel so down within me. I feel depressed. I feel like he is doing it with somebody else. The sense of trust is no longer there. And once you don't trust yourself, there's no way you can trust somebody else. And there's no way he is going to trust me, too. You understand? I'm just using it as example, like a um, reference, something like that. No, I'm not trying to boast or anything. I'm just, just to explain. You understand? A lot of young girls co coming up today, they see a lot of things in TVs and... If care is not taken, they might think that is the right way. But if God has given me the opportunity, because I was so tired today, I didn't even know I would be able to come on live this video. But God still gave me the grace. That's why I was tired. I can still say something. So I know that it is God's grace. And I really want some people to learn. I want people to learn through all these things. So that um trying to go into more details. You understand? The fact that you trust yourself 
It is the level of trust that you have for yourself that you can have for somebody else. That's why a lot of people say the men that that are so jealous that the ones who are not faithful to their wives because they know what they are doing to other women. That's why they are so jealous. They don't want any man to look at their wife. They don't want any man to... You understand? Okay, I will use my relationship as an example again. Sometimes I have made calls to other men while we are together. And it doesn't because of that stop trusting me. You understand? Because... I know within me, I am not dating these people. I am not sleeping with them. If I am not sleeping with you, then what makes you think I'm going to be sleeping with other people? You understand? Like, your heart is going to feel at rest. So, the topic of our discussion today is sexual purity, the will, the plan of a, for us for a peaceful life, the plan of God for us for a fulfilled life. You understand? You see, every young child, when they are at the very tender age, you ask them what do you want to become in the future, I want to become this, I want to become that, I want to become this. That is what is in their mind, that is what they want to be. That is their God's given gift. The beauty God has deposited in everybody starts from when you are young. But once you cross your path, once you cross that path of going into premarital sex, premarital sex is spiritual, it's not just physical intimacy alone. Once you cross that path, that's why you see a lot of young people, when you ask them, what do you want to be? I mean, young people maybe get into a certain, they start changing their childhood dreams. They start telling you, I want to do this. Ah, I can't even do that one again. Because their mind is change now what it see like when you when as a man when you have sex with a woman you throw out a part of you the seed within you you're you are throwing it into a woman who is not going to appreciate it who is not a part of your life you're wasting some like i don't know those things going if if I don't know how to explain this. I don't want to stand too raw, but I, I, at least I want to say something that someone can understand. You understand what I'm saying? Like a part of you is going into it. It's spiritual. It is not just physical. That's why you see a lot of men, once they do it once, they want to do it again, they want to do it again. If a man is telling you just this once and we will not do it again, it's lie. It's lie. It's lying you. If we do it again, because it's spiritual, it is not physical, it's not just meeting with, with each other for once and forgetting about it. You're not going to forget about it because you are dropping a part of you inside that person. A part of you is going into that, part, that person and that, the part of, another part of that person is going within you. Even the Bible confirms, it said when, when a man joins himself with a prostitute, maybe a prostitute, maybe an adult or a woman, that... The spirit is bonded together. Part of that woman is going to him. So it's the same thing. If you're joining yourself with someone who is a prostitute, that means you don't even know what can happen to you. You can become a prostitute boy too. And you start sleeping around. That's why you see a lot of men, they don't even care who they have sex with. They don't care. Because they're not doing it the right way. Once you do it outside marriage, you're not connecting. You're not bonding. You're not doing anything. You're just feeling attached. The women feel they are attached. You understand? Whereas they are not attached. Water cannot attach two things together. Put water between this thing. Now, how, how is water going to attach this thing? Look, they cannot attach. Even if you try to put chewing gum between them, it will not attach. You understand? So that's it. But when it is in marriage, you are sealed. Just like this. Round all round peg connected perfectly you fit in together you work together you're doing things together because we are in god's plan 
of marriage and God blesses the marriage and everything you start doing together starts flourishing. You understand? So that is it. It is, it is very, very important for us to know the will of God for us. So when, when your parents, as young people, when your parents are just trying to make you stay away from it, don't think they are being too harsh. Don't think they are in the old school or they don't know what is going on. Don't think the life has changed. The life that was then is still now. It's just the technology that has changed. The wisdom our parents have is still the same wisdom that have been in the olden days. It's still the same kind of experiences. It might not be in the same setting, it might not be in the same houses, the same, but it's still the same thing. Because when God created my breathed the bread of life into men. And it's just the same bread of life that is still living in every human being. You understand? So it's still the same thing. So listen to them. David, um, Solomon was talking in prayer. He said, my son, listen to me. Listen to the instructions of your parents. Be the type that you always want to learn from elders. Always want to listen to elders. It's not good. When, when you are the type that you want to do things after your own mind because you feel you are, you are in the new school. No. The, you can't do without the wisdom of elders. You understand? You can't do without it. So you have to calm yourself down and learn from them. So my young girls, my young boys out there, I'm advising you as an elder and as a, a servant of God. <laughs> because now I feel that God is making me to do these things. Please do the will of God. And you know one danger about this having sex outside of marriage, premarital sex is even when you get married, you are not going to be cured of it. You will think marriage is going to change you. Marriage will not change you. That's why you still see a lot of married women sleeping with other men, even while they are married. A lot of married men sleeping with other girls, even while they are married. When you, when you do it wrongly, you give chance for the devil to come into your life. That is how some, some men can be in the bondage of some women because they didn't do it right. But once you are doing it right, your wife will not wish you bad. She will not wish you evil. Even God will want it to be right. You understand? So that is it. So you, you, you have to be careful as a young boy. Maybe you are still 10 years old and you have never experienced something like that. Please keep it. When you keep it, you are keeping your destiny. That's your childhood dreams God puts in your heart. You are keeping it. You are, you are maintaining it. And when you stay on the side of God, it's going to maintain it for you. And it's going to make you to reach that path, that place. As a woman, you will always have that your self-dignity, self-integrity that integrity, you're not going to feel unnecessarily attached to any man. You understand? When a man is treating you wrongly, you're not going to feel um, attached to him. You will only be feeling like you are attached to this man, but you're not attached to him. You're not. Nothing is connecting you. You're just trying to force yourself on him. That's why a lot of men claim that some girls are forcing themselves on, on them. Because... The woman feels she's attached to this man. But you're not. You're not attached. And any man can just come around and sleep with you at any time. And it will not mean anything to you. It's going to cause a lot of damage when you get married. Because that thing will always be inside you. You will always feel that sex doesn't make you connected to anyone. Well, as if you had waited to do it in marriage, it's going to make you connected to your husband. It's not going to, you're not going to see it as just anything that you can just 
do with anybody anytime. You understand? So it is the will of God for us. The Bible says, this is the will of God for you, that ye abstain from sexual immorality. It is the will of God for us. As Christians, as people who have destiny to fulfill in life, every guy, every man and woman, every boy, every girl has destiny to fulfill. So if you want to maintain it, if you want to fulfill it, then stay away from premarital sex as a girl, as a boy. Please, stay away from it. A lot of girls who became prostitutes in their young age, see some people 20 years or less than that in their 20s going into prostitution. That is not how they wanted their lives to be. But because something left them, they feel used. They feel like there's nothing stopping me now. And it doesn't mean anything. And once the boy they claim love them, leaves them, the boy that made them do it, once he leaves them, they feel he has gone with everything. Although God has, we have the part of, of where God, God heals the broken hearted, yes, we have it. And it is very important that if you are already in that situation, you can still come back to God. There's no day that is too too late to come back to God. The only time that is too late for anyone to come back to God is after death. But once you are still alive and God has still given you the grace, you can still come back to God. Pray to God. Tell Him, God, now I am ready for you. I want you to renew me, renew my mind. And He will do it. But if you have not done it, I'm just showing you telling you those dangers in it so that you don't go into it they might tell you it is fun it is not fun it is not fun a lot of things you lose a lot of things you are not even enjoying anything because you are not going to enjoy it because you are doing it out of panicking like maybe somebody will catch me oh maybe don't don't like <laughs> like suppose i see you like don't come inside me like they are trying to make the guy not to make you get pregnant. Like, you just panic. But once it's married, you feel relaxed because this is the person you are devoting your life to. This is the person you are connecting with. This is the person you want to spend the rest of your life with. You understand? You are not afraid of getting pregnant. And you are not afraid of STDs. You are not afraid of anything and all that. It's not, you are not going to enjoy it as much as if you had waited Till after your wedding, before doing it. Because even God, God appreciates anyone who obeys him. You understand? So he's going to bless you for doing it. The satisfaction is going to be there. So don't even think of doing it as young people. Please, I'm begging you in the name of God. Protect your destiny. Protect your your the plans of God for your life and you also need it for a peaceful life. Those men who are promiscuous, they don't have peaceful life. They go from one woman to another. Like they don't want this one to know that this one is this one. Like stupid things like that that doesn't make them have a peaceful life. But once you are once you are married and this is the woman you are with, you build your life with this person. You're not Wasting your money outside on unnecessary girls outside, like those men that sleep around with young girls. You're not wasting your money outside if if you are only staying focused on your on your woman. So I'm talking. I, I've talked about the premarital part. Now I'm talking even outside marriage. Even when you are already married, when you are doing it outside of your marriage, it doesn't give you peace. You lose your peace. Sometimes you get lost in your thoughts. Sometimes. If the wife eventually gets pregnant, I mean the one outside eventually gets pregnant, they will be advising you to bring her into your home. And maybe the home that has a peaceful, nobody is fighting, nobody even hears that anyone is fighting. Now the woman comes into the home, the two women you start fighting, you start settling quarrels, you start, you just stress yourself and stress yourself. You don't have a peaceful life. What about the children? 
coming from that kind of marriage. They won't know what a peaceful home actually means. And it can affect their making decisions, even their choosing their partner in, in future. So, may God help us. I pray that if there's anyone out there who is thinking and worried on if he should do it, I pray that God will touch your heart this night. And you're going to decide. Because it starts with decision. You're going to decide that, Lord, help me. I want to do it your own way. If you do it, you're going to have the blessing for it. I pray. And if there's anyone who has been holding on, I pray that God will continue to help every one of us to continue to hold on and do it in God's way in the name of Jesus. And if there are people who have been doing it wrong but now want to change, I pray that God will touch your heart. God will renew your heart. God will help you. God will help everyone, every one of us to be able to renew and stay on the side of God so that we can enjoy the peaceful life God wants for us. Instead of having a partner you don't trust. Instead of being that partner your partner doesn't trust. You you are tr you're traveled, you are you are not even you you are not even sure of what your partner is doing. I think that's some of that's some of the dangers of doing it wrongly. And for young girls, once you start doing it with a man who claims he loves you, you're going to be used. He will use you the way you don't want to be used. You think he's going to give you love. He's not going to give you love. Because women like love, like affection, emotions, all this romantic kind of thing. He will not give it to you. He is not going to give to you. You are not going to feel that connection. The only way you can get true connection before you get married is true friendship. So as a young girl, if you want connection with anyone, make friends. Make friends. Don't go into sex with anyone. Make friends with them. Don't... Don't claim you love him so much. You can be in love with someone. It is possible. But let it remain in the friendship stage until you get married. Don't, don't open your... Don't give in for sex. Don't open your... You understand what I'm trying to say? For it. Because it won't connect you to him. It's going to cut off the connection. Maybe you have been building up a connection. Maybe you are in a relationship now. Thinking it's going to lead into marriage. Maybe while you're young, you started as friends. And now you are older. You think, okay, I want to get married now. And then you got with someone. You're in love with this person. You appreciate this kind of person. And you think eventually we might get married. Just like in my relationship now. Now, you see, the reason why I'm, I can easily talk about my relationship is because I'm at the age of getting married. You understand? So, if I talk about relationship from now to tomorrow, nobody's going to tell me you're too young for that or something. Because I'm at the age. When you are doing something at the right time, nobody is going to condemn you for doing it. You understand? So, you can, you can have a relationship when you are old enough and mature enough for it. And you are hoping it's going to lead into marriage someday. You understand what I'm trying to say. So when you're already in that stage and you find this person good enough for you, after studying him for some time, continue to build that connection without sex. Because it's not going to connect. Once you do it outside marriage, it will not connect. You're going to break that connection you have been building. Continue with that connection. You know, I always talk about my friend of 10 years because sometimes I still think about him. I think 
one of the reasons that make me so connected to him is because we didn't have sex. Everything, you know, when, when he told me stay away from me, it looked so like <laughs> Show me a question like, are you normal? Like, because this is the person I have known all these years. You understand? Like, a connection has been built, and I don't think <laughs> I will ever forget that I am connected to this guy. I don't think. A day will ever come in my life that because sometimes I wonder in my heart why is it that I can't just forget about this boy? But I, I think one of the reasons is because we were on the connection levels. If we had had sex, I would have forgotten about him. I would have just seen him as he broke my heart, like he, he left me. But even up to today, I don't feel he did anything wrong to me. Even for him staying away from me, I don't feel he hurt me. He doesn't. He didn't hurt me. He didn't offend me. And that's why I don't have any grudge against him. You understand? Because the connection was built. We talked on... Like, we, we talk... <laughs> you understand? Like, those are the things you should be doing while you're cutting or while you are before married don't go into sex a lot of girls they meet a guy they did the following day they already going into sex with him because they thought that sex means is sealing up their relationship no why don't you try the other way of just making friends with someone and watch the connection growing a lot of people can claim to tell you you are just friends fine you're just friends but what about the connections you have built because once a man and a woman are in friendship together and they're not married there's bound to be connections if you know this is our brain we have a way of thinking okay i think he's single okay maybe i can there's sometimes you think about it while you are alone you understand what i'm trying to say so that is that is the connection i'm trying to talk about you understand and if someone you already have connection with like that you get married to that person it's going to be beautiful you understand so that is why i said don't don't think sex is going to connect you sex will never connect you with anyone outside of your marriage it won't connect you friendship setting goals together achieving things together being there for each other those are the things that can get you connected speaking talking together doing things together like friendship let's just say friendship those are the things that can build it together and when you get married and you connect connect real connection now not just attaching yourself and feeling like you are you are into this boy you are not into him you're not even in him you're not even close you're just forcing it something that you're trying to force you're trying to create it's just like trying to create old so that this thing can fit they're trying to create you. You are forcing it. That's why some girls, they, they will have to cook, do all sort of things, wash the man's clothes, do a lot of things just to get attached to this man. That's not life. That's not, it's not up to that. You don't have to do all those things. I'm not saying if you have been doing it, you don't continue doing it. You can continue doing it. But I'm just trying to tell you that if you didn't have sex with this person, you won't have to do all these things. Before the man feels connected to you if the man is a, is a child of god too and they also want to do the will of god and he hasn't lost it he's going to feel connected to you you understand so if you don't you, you, it's not until you you stress yourself fight your family members do all sort of things trying to quarrel with your friends just because we want to stay with someone. It's not until that. God is the one controlling heaven and earth. You understand? If marriage is his will for you, 
And if this is the person he has wished for you, things will just work out naturally. You don't have to force it. You don't have to. And the time is just going to be perfect for you. So after saying all this, I hope someone has been blessed by this message today. Thank you so much for joining me. I am most grateful to God that I could do this today. I didn't know I would be able to do it. I was so tired. <laughs> but I'm grateful to God. That's what I'm just trying to explain about waiting on God's time. You just find things very, very easy and working so perfectly. I pray that God will help us to wait for the God's time before we go into sex in Jesus' name. Amen. And we're not going to evolve in next marital affairs. So it's God's way of giving us a happy home. It's God's plans for us so that we can have a happy home. We can have a home where your husband trusts you enough, trusts you so much that he doesn't stress you, he doesn't ask you to pull your pants so that he can check how many men you have slept with in a day. You understand what I'm trying to say? It's how to always be at peace because he knows once he enters, nobody is going to enter again. And even if you travel for as long as possible, his heart is at rest that nobody is sharing you with him. And you, your mind is at rest too. That your husband is not sharing his body with another person. He's not sharing his heart with somebody else. So when you're having sex, it's not only your genital organ that is joining you are joining your heart with somebody else you are giving the person a part of you and it might take it to anywhere it might jump it in another person's heart again so you are just being scattered you are shattered you are not composed you are not together so we, we i think we still do more on this sexual purity topic anything anything i see or anything god asks me to talk about we will still talk about it. So today we are going to stop here. Thank you. Have a wonderful night. And happy Sunday in advance. We thank God for today. Bye. Good night.